Hello students, welcome back to another lecture on mathematical physics and uh, today's lecture number is lecture number 6. Having seen an introduction to the vector spaces in the previous classes, it is now a time for us to learn the properties of the vector spaces and in particular we are going to discuss more about the inner product in the today's class. So the inner product in a particular vector space is a very important and a crucial concept and because of the existence of the inner product the space itself is called by the name inner product spaces. Suppose if a vector space does not have the ability to define inner product then such vector spaces will not be called by the name inner product space. So the terminology should be clear to you, inner product space, that is the name that you are going to give, provided that we have the possibility of defining a quantity called inner product. So that is the today's learning objective and inner product is there is nothing new for you because starting from the, uh, starting from the Euclidean geometry, of course I am showing here, you can follow this cursor here. If you are going to start with the two-dimensional and three-dimensional Euclidean space, you have the 2D and 3D vectors and if you are going to increase the number of elements or if you are going to increase the number of components, two components are there for two dimension, three components for three dimension. So if you are going to increase to n number, we say that it is going to be an n-dimensional Euclidean space which we are going to denote by the symbol Rn. Okay, this is not power, we read it as Rn. Therefore, for two-dimensional planar thing, you say R2. For uh, three-dimensional space, R3. So, these are the standard uh, symbols in mathematics which we will be using. So, once you, you since you are already familiar with the properties of the two-dimensional and three-dimensional Euclidean vectors with the corresponding unit vectors, ijk. We are going to extend the concept to higher dimension by only increasing the number of components. That's what, that's, that's what is going to happen here. And then the further uh, step towards the complex vector space is that you are going to admit the complex values for every one of the components. Okay, You know that the, in the case of the two-dimensional system you have something like a two, two times ax unit cap plus three times you say that unit vector in the y direction we say y cap or we say ay cap. So instead of saying two and three we will allow for the complex values then this will become complex vector space. So these are the uh, ways in which we are going to extend our understanding towards the complex vector space. The important point here to be noted is that if you don't want to follow this kind of steps and then if you want to directly jump into complex vector space then there may be a little difficulty because the properties that are that are being uh, that are uh, that are being explored for the euclidean space sometimes they are not valid for the complex vector space this is the place where difficulty comes you can always skip all the points and then directly jump into learning the complex vector space so as I already told you, the reason why there would be a difficulty is that your familiar properties in the case of the Euclidean geometry may not be valid. Okay, they are sometimes not valid in the case of the complex vector spaces and therefore new property enters into picture. And when you see the new property, then you, you feel it little difficult to accept for that property. But instead of that, if you are going to uh, follow a particular order, Namely that you start from 2D, 3D Euclidean space, move on to the higher dimensional Euclidean space, again you uh, slowly move on to the complex case, then you, you will be learning where is the place where certain properties are getting deviated. That means the property to be satisfied by the Euclidean space that will not be valid but instead some other property will be entering into picture. So you will be learning at what stage this, actually, this is actually happening. Only if you can follow this particular order. Therefore, maintaining the order is always very useful when you want to have a smooth learning experience. Otherwise, you'll have to jump into 
complex vector space when you don't understand you have to come back to uh, the euclidean case etc you have to make some kind of shuttle uh, you have to shuttle between these two places okay and then okay so after that what is that we are going to see is that once you understand the complex vector space we are ready to discuss about the function spaces anyway at that time i will explain for the time being you you take it for granted that uh, the simple vectors that are looking like 2i plus 3j those numbers 2 and 3 will be replaced by some functions something like sin x e to the power x whatever it is so if you are going to substitute the functions there rather than having some kind of elements then they are known as function spaces and then for the function spaces once again we will have to uh, rewrite the appropriate properties some kind of rewriting is required because these are continuous variable there is no discreteness there so we will discuss about the function spaces in the uh, maybe in the next class so today's class we are going to focus our attention on the inner product and by that uh, how do you understand the inner product is your elementary dot product which is quite familiar to you right away from the school the same inner product when you are going to move to the higher dimension we are going to rename by the name inner product so therefore there is no trouble in understanding this you start learning the dot product and then uh, the moment you understand and then extend it to the higher dimension then we will call by the name inner product space and a particular example of the inner product space is the hilbert space so inner product space is much more broader terminology there may be more spaces over and above the hilbert space but we are not interested uh, the reason being that our primary interest in is in learning the quantum mechanics so what is a hilbert space right now you can tell the answer it is one example of inner product space so what do you mean by inner product space the answer is it is a vector space that is equipped with inner product equipped with means the the vector space has the ability to define inner product that is called equipped with okay and then the dot product we are going to rename dot product is the one that we are going to rename to the inner product inner product and then the 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 respective symbol will be putting an angle bracket there so this is the total idea about the today's class okay and once this is clear let us move on to the i would like to go to the board and then uh, take some examples and then show it let me therefore go to the board and explain okay so as i already explained let us start with the basic thing uh, probably this is very simple one so to start with therefore uh, let me complete the writing here here is the place that i would like to explain so you you simply consider a particular example in three dimensional vector and how we are going to write the vector is the traditional way 3 times uh, i plus 4 times j minus 7 times k now, but there is a point to be noted here what is the explanation is we are going to separate the 3 4 and minus 7 you see that the components are 3 then you have a 4 and then you have a minus 7 so this 3 4 and minus 7 these are the components and the unit vectors are ax ay and the az so we would like to separate the unit vectors from the components this is very important and we are going to use this kind of idea because we don't want to mix the unit vector with the components so this point to uh, keep it uh, or make clear that unit vector will be coming separately components will come separately and the way in which you are going to write down you know the style the style of writing is 3 comma 4 comma minus 7 this is one style of writing the numbers and we say that this is one element in the vector space you can also write down as you can also write so instead of the comma version that means 3 comma 4 comma minus 7 we can also write it as a column vector like 3 then you write down 4 below 3 and then minus 7 below the 4 so you can also write it down as a column vector 
or you can also write it as a row vector row vector means remember comma should not be there so if you remove the commas then it is known as a row vector if you write it in the column vector that is also acceptable so remember that there are three ways of writing down an element in the vector space so keep this point and later we will use them so we will come back to the uh, style of writing later for the time being let us use the comma version and therefore so whatever i explained uh, I, I am trying to write down here that the components of the vector is written and unit vectors are there so we are going to move now now the plan is that we are going to move from the three dimensional euclidean space to the higher dimensional vector space so how when you are going to move this we are going to rename something and that's that is the place where you have to give the importance the importance is that unit vectors will be renamed as basis vector so this is this is a very important concept so when you are suddenly learning what is meant by basis you may feel it difficult to understand what basis is okay so, and if you are going to learn like this there is no difficulty because what is meant by basis is basis is something that is going to be similar to unit vectors in the lower dimensional euclidean space so whatever job the unit vector is doing that job will be done by the basis vector in higher dimensional space so the only difference is that we are going to rename when we are going to move from three dimensional to higher dimensional n dimensional vector space and once we are going to move to a higher dimensional case okay you can even maintain the name basis vector for the ax ay and dz there is nothing wrong in that so once you learn like this uh, you must be in a position to say that the ax cap ay cap and dz cap are the basis vector in the three dimensional euclidean space that's all about it so it is as simple as that so the terminology is what is important we are going to delete the name unit vector and we are going to bring the new name called basis this vector space etc are not required only basis is enough basis means unit vectors so this is the first point second point is that you have the components of the vector space this is what we say the element this is this is one element in a vector space so i am that is exactly i am writing in a general situation you know we don't want to have this kind of number 3 4 and minus 7 in general what happens is that in the case of the n dimensional situation we will be having n numbers and th those numbers are uh, going to be uh, we can represent it by some some letters the traditional method is that capital letter will be used for the set and the corresponding small letter will be used for elements each element so this is what is equivalent to uh, 3 comma 4 comma minus 7 and we say that capital a vector so the capital a vector has become v here and when you are moving to the uh, when you are moving to the higher dimensional space you delete the arrow we don't want to put the arrow here we don't want to put the cap here nothing will be there for the basis we don't put cap and similarly uh, for the vector you put a arrow on top right that arrow is also not required so nothing is required and the moment you use the word vector space uh, these things are clearly understood so this is the first point in moving from the traditional uh, traditional euclidean geometry to the higher dimensional uh, that means n dimensional vector space and in this case since i told you that this is the basis for three dimension you have three unit vectors for two dimension you have two unit vectors for one dimension only ax and if it is the case when you are moving to the n dimensional vector space you must have n number of elements in the uh, in the set this is the set ax comma ay comma az is the set that set is known as the basis set and for the n dimensional case the basis set will be b1 comma b2 etc up to bn and many books will use e1 comma e2 that's why i would like to show okay uh, whether you call it by the name b1 b2 or e1 e2 it's all fine okay only thing is that you are going to say that it is a basis set so this is your first step in understanding uh, the movement from the from the traditional euclidean space to the n dimensional vector space and we can of course we can call it by the name n dimensional euclidean vector space nothing wrong in that because the properties are going to be satisfied uh, by this particular n dimensional vector space and therefore 
n dimensional real vector space can also be called by the name euclidean vector space as long as it's all real number okay 3 is a real number 4 is a real number minus 7 is real and therefore v1 v2 v3 etc are they are all going to be real numbers and therefore we say that in the case of the real vector space uh, we have an opportunity to call by the name euclidean vector space but if you are going to move to the complex situation then we may not be able to call it by the name euclidean okay so with this introduction we are ready to move to the definition of uh, inner product so let me go to a different place in the board or okay and then i would like to explain what is meant by a dot product and the inner product and for that consider okay let us consider n dimensional vector space u you can understand why small letters are coming now they all belong they all belong to the real number set okay so so u v and w we let us consider one more so capital w will be equal to the set of all elements given by w1 w2 etc up to wn and the point to be noted is that all of them okay they all of them belong to the or n or n you understand right it is uh, n dimensional real vector space that's all that is the meaning of that and once it is clear once you have this uh, three uh, three vector spaces remember vector spaces okay u u is a vector space v is a vector space w is a vector space that is the meaning okay this particular vector space has so many elements that is the meaning of that okay once we have that we are in a position to define the traditional dot product u dot v and remember that the u dot v the traditional u dot v traditional means uh, the dot product that you learned from uh, all the way from your school okay so that concept is what we are going to extend to the higher dimensional situation and in which case we are going to use the new symbol with an angle bracket now remember that the dot the concept of the dot product is maintained but however the symbol is going to be a new symbol so we will not be using the dot anymore so remember that we are we are going to delete the the concept of the dot here so dot will be deleted but instead you have the angle bracket and then a comma comes into picture u comma v okay there is no dot inside so the angle bracket okay that represents the dot product and we are going to delete the name dot product also we are going to bring a new name called inner product so this is known as the inner product but however but however the meaning of u dot v will be retained you already know from your school what is meant by a dot b if a is a vector b is a vector what is a dot b that you already know so that based on that only we are going to write down this expression so based on the definition of the dot product only we are going to write down this definition u1 v1 plus u2 v2 plus etc up to last element so okay other things are explained so let me write down that so dot product is nothing but it is the same thing as inner product in the higher dimension that's all about it and the the important point that we are going to do is that what will happen if you interchange them let us interchange the order u and v so this is uv no i i want to interchange it. so if i interchange i have to write down as vu so let me write down the case for the u vu so vu will be written by the corresponding so the first element u will be uh, uv is the order is now changed vu if it is the case uh, what will happen so the the answer will be given by v1 u1 plus v2 u2 etc based on this definition because this is the statement of definition okay which is actually derived from what is already known from elementary uh, 2d vectors 3d vectors so therefore if it is, if this is the definition for u comma v then what is v comma u so you can easily understand that the order is interchanged and therefore each one of them has to be interchanged and then we can write down so now the question is that whether this expression 
written in white color and the yellow color expression whether these two things are uh, identically same that means if you are going to substitute numerical values will you get the same value or not so you can clearly tell the answer but before telling the answer you have to be careful whether u1 v1 etc are real numbers or complex numbers so these things are actually real numbers you, you, all of them belong to the real number and therefore when you are multiplying two real numbers like this you know the order is not important and therefore we make a conclusion that the yellow color expression and white color expression are the same or we say identically same so because of this conclusion we have a first property so i will write down that because of the reason the reason is important because all the numbers are real numbers here the two of them are equal we say that u comma v is same as v comma u now this is important a property and this property is known as symmetry property of the inner product so keep this it may look very simple but but as i already told you this is the property which is going to be broken this property will be no longer valid okay when you are moving to the complex case so therefore that is the reason why i am emphasizing that keep a note of uh, this particular property known as the symmetry property of the inner product remember once again real vector space okay when we move on to the complex vector space we will we will find some difficulty and i will explain what is happening in the complex vector space so i would like to go to the complex vector space case so this is the real one okay let us close this i will go to a different place in the board uh, to explain what is meant by a complex vector space so as usual uh, in the case of the complex vector space also the appearance of the uh, vectors will look very similar because it's only representative right symbolic representation if you have the actual values uh, you can easily see the complex value coming to picture namely square root of minus 1 but because these are variables you know you may not be able to see where is complex value the point to be noted is that u comma v belong to the n dimensional complex you see this c here this c represent cn instead of rn you are going to write cn cn means n dimensional complex valued elements that means u1 is a complex valued element u2 is complex valued similarly all these things are complex valued and therefore we say that u is a complex vector space and capital v is a complex vector space that's all about it so once you allow the complex field instead of real field you allow the complex field for the scalar and similarly each and every element inside the vector space they are all allowed to come from the complex variables if it is the case the vector space will be known as complex vector space that looks fine but now when you want to define the inner product some difficulty comes it's not big difficulty but some change comes so let us see what is that so as usual we will define what is meant by the inner product we will define what is the inner product now with uh, the usual symbols that you already know now that this is a complex quantity what happens is we define like this one of them will be complex conjugate you know what is star right star means complex conjugate so here this is the defining equation remember this is the fundamental defining equation so you should not ask uh, you know derive this we are we cannot we are not going to derive this you already know what is meant by inner product all the way from the real vector space when you are moving to the complex case what happens is if you don't put a star here now you can ask the question why did you put star here if you don't put a star here then what happens this is u1 v1 plus u2 v2 etc then then the trouble comes the trouble is nowhere in this particular expression the complex nature is taken care because you are you are again defining the same equation as the uh, as the uh, what is known as the real vector space same definition we are going to use so the complex valued nature will not be included in the definition and for that reason people have already defined in order to take care of the you know the complex valued function uh, people redefine the dot product like this where 
one of the element is the complex conjugate the other element is the original one that means v will be as original as the same thing whereas u will be complex conjugate of that so that is the reason uh, why there is a star here so we are going to define the inner product like this based on this definition only anything else will follow that that is the important point and let me therefore write down that star means the complex conjugate so then what happens actually so then we would like to know we would like to interchange now i am interchanging so after interchanging how it looks let me write down plus etc v n star u n so this is u v this is v u similarly you know what will happen first uh, the, the, the first part right the, the whatever is the first element that only you will have to take the star so here is v is the first element and therefore v will be star so all the v will be star all the second element u will be the unstarred original values and now and now if you compare these two things that means the white color expression and the yellow color expression can you say that can you say that uv is equal to vu because the same thing we have done in the case of real case right so we ask the question and the very it is very clear that these two things are not same and therefore we make a important conclusion the conclusion is that the inner product is we, we we do not have the symmetry property that is the conclusion so our conclusion is that u comma v is not equal to v comma u which means that inner product is not at all symmetric in the complex case so i'll finish writing that inner product is not symmetric but however we would like to do something extra okay it is uh, uh, i'll keep the equation number uh, i would like to or we would like to do some extra work to find out when it will be equal it is always easy to say not equal but that is fine but you can always ask the question under some special situation you know uh, these two things can be equal so can you do something can you do some manipulation so that these two things become equal okay that is the that's that's the plan and in order to do that let us perform some simple calculation of taking complex conjugate so we will let us consider by taking a complex conjugate of the equation number 2 that is the yellow color equation that means you know v, v comma u and then i put a star here and of course uh, uh, you may get a doubt here so how did i write the first element like this you see that the u1 has come the uh, u1 has come in the first place and star is there v1 has gone to the second place and the star is removed how this is possible of course that is quite a simple thing uh, which you already know from your school i would like to write down that the product you if if you are going to have a product of complex valued functions like ab and complex conjugate will be given by b star a star this is this is coming from the complex algebra so based on that only i am writing actually and once you finish writing now you will be able to tell whether it is equal to the original expression original expression means equation 1 so the equation 1 is there right you have to compare with that so now what happens is the the current equation which is the uh, the latest equation is same as your original expression 1 so now what happens is somehow we have made it equal to the u comma v so that is what i am trying to say that we have made some some kind of manipulation and we got the equality and therefore let us write down the conclusion what is the conclusion is that u comma v the inner product u comma v is equal to you can interchange like that but you have to put a but you have to put a star so that means you see now now the inequality that was there now it has become equality here the only thing is that a star has to come here so therefore we are able to interchange them subject to the condition that you must take a complex conjugate and what is a complex conjugate if you have a plus ib then a minus ib is the complex conjugate that means plus is becoming a minus and because of this reason this property is known as anti symmetry property okay it is known as anti symmetric property because star is there and the purpose of the star is to change the 
plus sign to minus sign for the complex value and therefore this property is very important property for the case of remember for what for the case of complex vector space so that's important for the case of complex vector space fine so uh, like this you like this only you will be able to understand the properties of the vector space now once this is clear i would like to write down some additional properties okay here there is nothing uh, much for proof now you will be able to understand uh, and only thing you should remember uh, or you should uh, you should be able to understand is that this kind of dot we are going to eliminate we will not use them because it is very beginning i am writing like this these dots can be eliminated and put an angle bracket and then write down u comma v that is how you have to write down because uh, you no know, first line i am writing like this uh, for the purpose of understanding and uh, uh, from the next line onwards this dot i i will not write but instead i will put angle bracket and run write down so this is one i don't okay it doesn't look nice let me remove it i, I want to write down the second property known as the homogeneity property some constant times the inner product u comma v some constant times the inner product u comma v is the same as it is the same as the inner product of the k is multiplied to the first element and v these kind of properties are very important you know in the examination sometimes and you know, especially gate exam or csir they may ask you to simplify certain inner product so if the k is present in the first argument first argument means the one which is present to the left side of the comma this is a comma here yes. left side of the comma is known as first argument right side of the comma is known as the second argument so if the if the constant or a scalar k is there remember once again scalar is also complex valued function this is a complex valued scalar so when it is present in the first argument the k can be as the original k but suppose that this is another important point suppose the k comes in the second argument okay you remove the k here and put the second argument then what happens is this will become k bar k bar or k star k star means what complex conjugate so remember that you cannot use the same k okay uh, uh, whether it is in first argument or second argument if you are going to put it in the second argument k star first argument means original k so this point should be remembered and because of that reason we have two properties one is known as the homogeneity property the other one is known as the anti homogeneity property so i would like to i, I would like to write down the anti homogeneity property now you take the k star and then write down u comma v so now it is coming in the second second place and therefore it is written down like this and then maybe another important property i would like to write down what is known as the additivity property additivity property you know it looks like distributive property but uh, don't confuse it looks very similar but I, let me write down this is known as the additivity property you see this property this one and the first one they look very similar but they are not same okay they look similar right it it only looks similar but it is not same uh, you see that after the dot you know when you you have a dot product here after the dot you have the addition then only it is known as distributive here before the dot you have the plus therefore this is known as additivity property okay so distributing means u is distributed to each one of the element inside the bracket u is distributed to each one of the element inside the bracket that is why it is called a distributive property here additive additivity property means this this additivity is maintained here also the point is that this is not a new property so i would like to mention that this is not a new property uh, uh, which is independent of them okay uh, for the purpose of clarity i would like to make a few simple steps for the additivity property in order to show how this is coming okay let me therefore uh, see how to work out this particular expression initially it looks like as some kind of confusion because both of them look very similar and to avoid that 
I will write down some additional steps here to understand. Okay, so let me, I, I want to write down in the angle bracket notation, that's what I am trying to say. So let us forget about the dot notation and then write the angle bracket notation. Then how it looks like? This equation looks like, put, a, put an angle bracket, u plus v, put a comma, then w, and that is equal to, yeah. Now what to do? So here, what is the point that I am trying to do is, I want to explain some steps here. And the steps are, and this, these steps are based on some of the properties. So first of all, I, I want to use the anti-symmetry property in order to simplify. So I will write down that let us use the anti-symmetry property so that we can write the first step. Do you remember what is anti-symmetric property? You have to remember, otherwise you, we don't know, you don't know what I am doing actually. Anti-symmetry property means put the W there, put the U plus V here, that means you interchange them and after interchanging them you have to put a star for the entire thing. That is known as anti-symmetry property. You know that in that case these two are equal. Remember equality is there here. So this one and that one will be equal only if you use some property. That is exactly what I am doing. So u plus v and put a star here. So now it is clear that this expression is equal to this expression. So which means that we have used the anti-symmetry property. And now, and now what happens is now we are ready to use the distributive property. Now you see that this expression is what is known as distributive property. Okay, so let us use the distributive property, which means W has to be distributed inside W comma V or W comma U plus W comma V, but then you have the star everywhere. So a common star is there everywhere. And once this is clear, okay, this is the distributive property we have used. And then let us simplify this which means that the star has to be taken everywhere and you know what to do for star okay so we are applying the complex conjugate rule for that and that's it we got the expression so finally what happened is that we started with this expression we have applied some of the rules that are familiar to you and we got a new expression this new expression is what we are giving the name additivity property now you see the additivity property let me go up and then show it. So this is what is known as the additivity property that was there here. It is there here. So this is the additivity property I have been, I have been talking about. So we got it. U dot W it is there here. V dot W it is there here. So therefore additivity property is not something new which can but however it can be derived from the properties that are already known to you. Already known to you means the anti-symmetry property, distributive property. So like this you can derive some additional properties as and when required. Okay. So uh, now you are able to feel uh, the difference between the uh, between the real vector space and then the complex vector space. So we have been discussing something about the real, something about the complex. Uh, you remember that this is a green color board, right? So in green color board, we are we are describing complex vector space. In some in the in the black board or black color board, uh, I have been explaining the real vector space. So in that particular tradition, I would like to go back to the real vector space and then discuss an additional property of the inner product. So in that way I would like to go back to the, the real vector space and then let us discuss some interesting property of the inner product. So remember that this is real and we have come back to the you know black color board here and the definition for the inner product in the case of the real vector space is written down here and now the question is uh, now the question is what happens if the second element is also same as the first element see uh, what is the meaning of this this is the inner product between the two vector spaces u and v u is one vector space v is another vector space so this is the inner product of the two vectors 
Now the question is why do you want to consider two of them? Let us consider the inner product between the same same vector. That means it is called the self inner product. What will happen? That is the discussion now. So let us substitute and then write down what happens. If the first element is also u, second element is also u, both of them are same, then it is known as the self inner product. Then what will happen? That is the question and you can easily understand what will happen. So the second element v1, now what will happen? This is u1 is fine. Second element will also become u1. So u1 into u1. This will be u2 into u2. So that means u1 into u1 means u1 square etc. So that is what I am going to write down u1 square plus plus the last element like this it will become and therefore this is what is known as the self inner product but the interesting point to be noted is that this being the square each one is the square here and therefore none of them can be negative value minimum can be zero of course zero is possible but it has to be a positive value and therefore we say that greater than or equal to zero. There are two points are there to be noted here that equal to zero is there right when it will become equal equal to zero is each one of them should be zero separately first element should be zero second element should be zero and similarly last element should be zero only under that condition only under that condition you will get zero in all other cases zero will not come you will get a positive number so what is sure about this kind of self inner product is it is sure or it is definite that it is a positive number. It is very sure that the self inner product is positive number. Since it is definitely positive, okay, it is definitely positive, we say that it is positive definite. So mathematicians give the name positive definite quantity or property. And interestingly we are going to give the name called norm, N-O-R-M, norm. So what is norm here is that when you have two different vector spaces u and v, it is called inner product. If you have the same object, identically same object in both the places, then inner product is renamed as norm. So remember that this is not a new concept now. It is the same inner product and we are going to give a new name provided that you are going to have self inner product. So self inner product is going to be norm. Okay. But let us now define what is meant by norm in a formal way. I would like to write down that. Okay, this is a very important point. That's why I am highlighting. Self inner product is always greater than or equal to zero. This is known as the positive definite property. Okay, once you know this, I want to write down the uh, definition for the norm. So the definition for the norm is like this. The norm of a vector capital U is represented by, so this is the representation. So uh, you should always remember one thing that we are always having some kind of uh, notation. If the angle bracket is there, it is called inner product. If you have double vertical line, then it is known as norm. And remember that uh, not, it is nothing but it is actually self inner product. But however, you see, you, you ask the question, why should I write the u two times? You have to write down the u two times, right? That looks uh, not good. And therefore, uh, people want to invent a new symbol for this kind of an object. So this kind of an object is therefore rewritten like this, where the u is written, this is u actually, the u is written only once, not two times. And since this is the self-inner product, it is given a symbol with a double vertical line. So double vertical line is known as the norm. And norm is nothing but the uh, this quantity. But there is a square coming into picture, so therefore I would like I would like to better write down this definition. I'll put a highlight here because this is the defining equation. So which means that now uh, you can easily understand like this: what is meant by self inner product? Answer is square of the norm is the self inner product. Based on this understanding. This particular statement y square root comes into picture is very clear. Okay, first of all, you evaluate this and then uh, apply the square root. And once this is clear, uh, now let us write down formally for n dimensional, for n dimensional case, 
let us write down explicitly so that it will be clear norm of u is equal to square root of because you have the square root and let us evaluate this u1 square plus u2 square plus etc which is already there here in fact it is the same thing the same thing i would like to write down here to make it very clear statement that norm means the square root will come so that point will be clear to you so this is this is the definition of the norm which is once again an important concept and of course as i already explained i would like to make this statement here under what condition zero will come i already explained to you zero will come if every one of the element is zero so you you ask the question when the norm will be zero the norm will be zero provided if each element is zero then only this zero square then this zero square etc only then zero will come therefore this is an important uh, conclusion that zero norm is possible if and only if each and every individual component is zero this is an important result okay so this is uh, keep this particular result and once this is clear about the about the norm i would like to explain i would like to explain what will happen in the case of complex vector space so now that you understood what is norm in the real vector space let us try to understand uh, a similar kind of meaning in the case of the complex vector space okay for complex vector space we will move to the green color board and then as usual you start with the definition of the inner product once inner product is there you make self inner product now you understand what i am doing self inner product and that's all and then each one of them will be equal to the modulus of u1 square etc of course how the modulus comes you already know from elementary complex algebra maybe i will write down for you if z equal to x plus i y then z bar is x minus i y so what will happen if you multiply if you multiply i'll get in x square plus y square right and that is actually this is what is known as modulus of z square so that is why that is why i have written a modulus everywhere so that is that is a reason and our conclusion is this is the conclusion that the self inner product u comma u is the norm and therefore this statement is very important so what is the difference between this expression and the real real vector space is in the case of the real vector space this modulus is not there remember modulus was not there it was simply u1 square plus u2 square in the case of the complex vector space each one of them is modulus u1 square plus modulus u2 square etc and what is the meaning of the modulus is the modulus will be given by their components squared okay you will have to consider what are the components for the u1 and those things you have to square and add one one real part will be there and one imaginary part will be there for this u1 isn't it so real part square plus imaginary part square that 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 kind of calculation you have to execute then only this will come and similarly you have to do for all the elements and then i have put a square here if you want to remove the square you have to put a square root here so square root is there even in the case of the complex vector space square root is there that is not a problem but the distinction comes in the in the place where the modulus of the complex number is present okay so keep an keep an eye on the square there okay otherwise you know you will forget the square root and once again i want to emphasize that this expression is valid for the complex vector space so i want to write it explicitly all u1 u2 u3 etc whatever be the case they all belong to the complex space cn cn means n dimensional complex valued space and of course the positive definite property is satisfied here also and therefore there is nothing new here i would like to say that the positive definite property is maintained as it was in the case of the real vector space and that's the conclusion so once this is clear that means you know you are studying something uh, you are actually studying something in the real vector space coming to the complex vector space again you are going back to the 
real vector space so that you are able to compare and contrast the important properties now we are going to make an important definition uh, with a reference to the quantum mechanics and that is called the hermitian inner product i would like to define so i would like to write down that hermitian inner product and the moment i am talking about hermitian inner product with reference to the quantum mechanics these are all complex valued space and therefore um, i am still explaining in the green color board now there is a difference between there is a very small difference between the way in which you are going to define the inner product already you know the definition for the inner product in the complex space already you know because this is the way we in which we have defined now what is meant by an hermitian inner product is it is an alternate way of defining okay so alternate way of defining means you you understand what it is there is a u here so therefore u is there this is second element is the second element is there so you can define the complex conjugate that is the star to any one of them the point to be noted is that in the inner product star has to come either to the first element or to the second element the standard method standard means mathematicians uh, define the inner product by putting the uh, star to the second element second element is v but in quantum mechanics for historical reason or whatever reason it is people started defining the inner product by putting the star to the first element so you can define in any way ultimately the properties will be satisfied all properties of the inner inner product will be satisfied and therefore both the definitions are acceptable but however when when you are working in a particularly to the quantum mechanics people always use the hermitian inner product so therefore i would i would like to make this statement clear to you by writing this u n star then we have a v n so now you are able to compare and contrast so what is the difference between these two star comes to the first element this is the first element and you have the star everywhere and here v is there v is star is there so now the question is which inner product should you use that is a question mathematicians that means those who who uh, those students who are you know majoring in mathematics they generally you prefer to use the standard inner product but those students who are majoring in physics who are particular about studying the compl uh, the what you call the uh, quantum mechanics they prefer to define the inner product in this manner that means hermitian inner product and therefore keep this kind of distinction and let us use the hermitian inner product in our work there is a point to be noted so i would like to write this particular explanation so in the case of the quantum mechanics we use the hermitian inner product ip i will write ip means inner product okay and the right side one is generally uh, used by uh, mathematics graduate students and therefore uh, you know when when they don't have to read the quantum mechanics in such cases standard inner product is used okay so this is the point to be noted and once because of this definition nothing goes wrong so uh, that also keep a note what is the note is the properties of the inner product will will remain the same okay properties will not be disturbed okay properties of the inner product will remain the same uh, whichever way you define that's that's what i want to say okay it's valid for the both the definitions and that's all so this is an important point that has to be noted down and now once this much is clear to you so what so what is that we have done till now is we we started to understand the we started to understand what is meant by dot product and from the dot product you realized what we are you extended it to the inner product inner product in the real space inner product in the complex space and you have seen some of the properties especially the positive definite property of the norm and finally we have the definition for the hermitian product or hermitian inner product so these are the important points uh, uh, which we are going to use it for the for the next class so that we will take some more examples and then understand what is meant by the norm of a vector okay we need to understand the norm in terms of some geometric properties okay in terms of geometrically how do we understand inner product for in, in terms of geometric interpretation what is meant by the the norm and similarly 
uh, can you define angle between two vectors in the case of complex vector space such kinds of questions are coming and therefore we will address these questions in the next class